Hey guys, Jacob Wheeler here with another fantastic fishing tip. I'll tell you guys what, this has been one of the biggest crazes in the last couple of years that come along. It's the black marabou hair jig. For smallmouth, it's, there's something about it that really catches them, and it's a technique you definitely need to know. We're about to dive into it, I'm about to give you guys the goods. First thing we're gonna look at is the weight of your hair jig. You know, this is a finesse tactic. You know, this is something that you're gonna to wanna to throw light line, light braided line with a light fluorocarbon leader. Um, you know, I prefer eighth, you know, probably the most because I can actually get a little bit more distance. Some guys like 16th, but the, the 16th and then up to a quarter, if you're fishing a little bit deeper, you can throw up to a quarter and I've thrown it and, and, and had some success. But it definitely seems like that 16th to that eighth is, is the sweet spot because you really want that, that hair jig to really hang in that strike zone. It's not really a, a you know, covering a lot of water technique. It's more so uh, one of those techniques that once you find them or you know some fish are in the area and they're really finicky, this is a bait you're gonna want to throw. You know, here's three different options of hair jigs right here. And, and you know, one thing that, that people will get caught up in their mind, they see guys throwing pros throwing black, that's not necessarily the only color that they bite. Um, I've done really well on this little brown guy right here, this little 16th, 16th ounce. Here's a quarter, a uh, little quarter ounce. Um, hair jig, and here's a big poofy one. And, and you know, one thing that I think I've seen people get caught up with is they have to be all big poofy, you know, big poofy hair jigs. I, I have not seen the difference between this one right here is a, a VMC hair jig. It's like a two bucks or three dollars, and this one's a, a custom hair jig, um, like six dollars. And and I have not seen a difference between the smallmouth really caring for one or the other. Um, I throw them both, and, and they they both work really well. Um, but the one thing is about it is you definitely need to put something on there as a trailer to get a little bit more distance. And what I'll do is I'll take an end of maybe a, a, a Cinco or a stick bait and take that back half, which is expensive. That's why I use like off brand or something. Um, and I'll take that back half or back maybe an inch and a half of that stick worm, bite it off or cut it off. And then just thread it on that hair jig. And that gives you a little bit more weight. When you're casting that thing, you're gonna get a little bit more distance. And that's really important, especially when you're throwing a small little profile hair jig like you are. You know, what's the right application and when is the right time to throw that little black hair jig? You know, for me, definitely when the smallmouth are shallow. And the majority of the smallmouth come shallow, you know, right around the springtime when they come up there to spawn. So, you know, I'm gonna look for those warming little flats, um, the sand flats, little gravel flats where I can cast this thing around and wind it around. You know, the, the thing is, I've caught them anywhere from the water temperature being like maybe mid 50s when they first come up to start cruising around on those spawning flats all the way through the summertime. Um, not as much in the fall, but it seems like it's really, really good right around that spawn, post spawn time is the prime time to be throwing that little hair jig. Now when I'm choosing a rod for this, I, you know, I, I look for something that has a little bit of tip, medium to a medium line. I want to definitely have a little bit of tip because you're trying to whip cast that little hair jig around. Um, you know, 7.4 medium light is my preference right here is in the Kuma. Um, and then I have a smaller profile reel. This is an Inspira. And I'm being able to cast that thing out there and wind it real slow. This is actually a five to one gear ratio spinning reel. And that, and that allows me to slow it down. Sometimes you just want to move so fast with that little hair jig, and you're trying to wind it, and you just gotta, it's like deathly slow. It seems the slower you go, the better off you are, and the easier it is to get those fish to bite. One of the most important things with this whole technique is picking the right line. Now, I throw braided line because you're gonna be casting a little bit further, and I also pick Suffolk's Nano Braid, and six pound is super key because the thinner the braid, the further it's gonna cast. Lighter line is better, six pound fluorocarbon on the, on the leader, and it's just something about, you're gonna get double the length of your cast with a lighter braided line. And, and you would think six pound, man, that's awful light. I've never had an issue breaking that line. It casts really well, and you're gonna get a lot more fish in the boat, and you're gonna cover a lot more water with those longer casts. All right, when I'm throwing this thing around, this is how I'm working it. I'll throw it out there, end of a dock right there, let it fall, and get to the bottom. All right, it's on the bottom. I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna start slow winding it. It's almost like a little small swim bait. You know, and, and you're winding that thing around, but one thing you really have to pay attention to when you're casting and you're winding this thing is making sure you have good polarized sunglasses, looking out there and paying attention if there's not something following it. And, and smallmouth are notorious, notorious for following these baits. And when you, if you see one following it, you wind it a little bit. And if you can see it far enough out, you can kill that bait. And that bait falls so slow because it's at that 16 to an eighth ounce little jig just falling so slow. 
then the majority of the bites will come up there and they'll grab it. I'd probably catch half the smallmouth that I catch on that hair jig on that, that drop when I see those fish that are actually following it. Check out this recent fish that I just caught on that black hair jig. Big one. Another big one. There's one behind him, Terry, too. Look how clear the water is. You can probably see, ah, uh, not quite. You know what's crazy is I just broke off my leader. I tied it straight to braid. Straight to braid. You got white braid on. Same size as good. Yeah! <laughs> Gosh! That's awesome. Look at that, he's just barely hooked right there in the corner of the lip. Yes, sir. I don't think that's going to be beat, beat Brandon's, but. That's a big one. I don't know. We're going to see. Official score, official weight. Ah, oh, 493. Right between 493 and 5 pounder. Just another, just another, just rant little fish, you know. Just another little fish. Little one. Just another little one. That one's good. Gosh, this is so funny. Man, wasn't that a nice fish? It's crazy to think how big a fish will bite that little tiny bait. Hopefully, you guys learned a little bit more about this technique and you can get out there on the water and actually experience how big a fish this thing catches. Look at you, barely hooked right there in the corner of the lip. Yes, sir. I don't think that's going to be deep. I tell you what, that's pretty cool, huh? Jacob Wheeler knows a thing or two about bass fishing. You know, I've known Jacob for a long time, and he's, he's in my opinion, he's one of the top bass anglers in the country, and he's going to do some fantastic things in the sport. And so I'm glad you guys enjoyed watching that little tip video, hair jigs. I mean, what a cool thing. But, you know, Jacob also did a couple of tips for us on the channel. He did the top three finesse baits, which is a video that did really well on the channel. So if you haven't seen that one, be sure to click the link in the description down below we'll have that ready for you he also did a spinnerbait tip you know spinnerbait fishing is is something that everybody needs to learn how to do well you know a spinnerbait works for not only large mouth small mouth like he did in the tip video spotted bass everything loves a spinnerbait and so that tip that he did is fantastic as well jacob's fishing the elite series right now he's kicking butt over there and we've got some cool stuff. Speaking of other tips, we've got Brian Thrift on the channel with a couple really good tips if you want to check that out. So thank you so much for all the support you guys have been giving me on the channel. We're going to have some really cool guests coming down the pipe as well. And I'm going to leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with a little message from me about Evernerd. You know, I've spent my entire career pushing an Evernerd E-Tech. Stuff's awesome. So again, thanks for watching, guys, and enjoy it. Hey guys, Scott Martin here, Evernerd Pro. You know, I've been running Evernerd my entire career. You know, I make my living catching fish, and I make my living in this bass boat. And you know, when you think about it, I probably spend more time on the water with a G2 than I do on land. And uh, but a couple things right here, as you see these two trophies, pretty cool pieces of hardware. These are my, my two last victories. Uh, one this year, 2017, at Lake Cumberland, and at the end of the season last year at Lake Champlain. And you know, these two trophies represent why I run an E-Tech, and here's why. I run an Evinrude E-Tech G2 because of fuel efficiency, reliability, torque, and speed. And here's two trophies that represent that. The other thing is, making long runs allows me, with running an E-Tech, saving fuel. I didn't have to worry about stopping gas and, and worrying about trying to figure out where I need to go to fill up or how many miles I can go. I basically have unlimited, for the lack of better words, unlimited range with this. Matter of fact, it's the best in class for fuel economy uh, across the board, even on four strokes. You know, guys, it, it, it's, it's awesome. So when you ask yourself, why should I consider getting an Evernerd E-Tech, uh, especially a G2? Well, it's because of reliability. It's because of fuel economy. It's because I make my living with that motor on the back of my boat, guys. So. There's lots of cool things right now to uh, check out on the website, evanrude.com, and uh, be sure to check them out. They've got lots of cool promotions going on as well. If you guys are thinking about repowering, or you're thinking about buying a boat, like one of these Ranger Z520s, be sure to stick a G2 on the back of it. Oh, oh, oh.